You made a brilliant move to join In the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics today because we have the man, the information man. The National Football League is Peter King. Peter King is the National Football League. He's an amazing resource, and uh, we do appreciate him joining us to let everybody know what he thinks about Jake Browning's performance. And he was as impressed as all of us. There's no question about it. And surprised, and rightfully so, he talks about that. He talks about uh, what that means for the Cincinnati Bengals. He talks about the NFL in general and how tight a race it is for playoff uh, perspective. There's going to be basically a relay race to the finish in the National Football League. Who's going to run the final leg? Who's going to get the baton and finish that race? Who's going to qualify for the National Football League playoffs? Bengals are still in the hunt. They're not dead. In fact, their heartbeat's pretty strong. Made a great decision joining us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, as always, coming to you from our studio, because we've got a superior guest. We have the information man in the National Football League, the award-winning, the best, the greatest, Peter King. How are you, sir? Oh, stop it, Dave. You just love you are. me. That's all. You're you are. You're the man. I do love you. <laughs> well, <laughs> like thank a brother. You so, much. <laughs> so, what'd you think? I mean. How about Jake Browning going out and spinning it like he did and making a statement? He made himself some money potentially, Peter, didn't he? <clears throat> well, I mean, look, this game reminds me exactly of what Jarrett Stidham did last year. You know that name, Jarrett Stidham? He was yes, the sir. Raiders backup quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo went down. They're facing the number one defense in football and Jarrett Stitt in the 49ers. And Jarrett Stidham in his first start in the NFL threw for, I don't know, maybe 370, 360. uh, Just totally lit it up. And the Raiders, who had no business being on the field with the 49ers, almost beat him. (laughs) This game really reminded me of that because, look, Jake Browning's not, not even a household name in his own household. (laughs) And, you know, it's to see something like that. And Dave, listen, I got a lot of opinions about this, but probably my two biggest ones are that you can say that, okay, the season's over without Joe Burrow. And and that's what probably most people thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, there's something that sometimes we forget in all this. It is, it's not only the human element, it is the competitive element. Because think about if you're Zach Taylor, think about if you're Brian Callahan, okay? Think that everybody in the outside world thinks it's over. <clears throat> And don't you really love that? You know, don't you love that kind of challenge? I mean, nobody loves having to play without one of the three or four best quarterbacks in football, obviously. But that's the cards you're dealt. So stop crying about it and figure out a way to try to win these games and sneak into the playoffs. That's one thing. But the second thing I really thought about this game, as you watched it unfold, and, you know, Dave, you're you're in the stadium, so I don't know what exactly you expected, okay? But so I'm, I, I'm you know, I'm sort of a, a totally innocent bystander in all this. Sure. But I watched the Bengals on the first series, and you could just tell. All right. I could just tell they're trying to protect Jake Browning. Everything is short. Trying to get the ball to Jamar Chase in space a couple of times. One of those throws, you know, Chase lost three yards. Right. You know, and I would love to know at that point, I'd love to know after that first series, Jaguars go right down. You know, they go right down the field after that. And they basically say, okay, 
you know, the Bengals have to be saying, hey, listen, let's stop pussyfooting around here. The only way we have a chance to win this game is if we score with them. And, and, and I am looking at this game, quite honestly. I'm looking at this game. And the next series, when you watch the next series, what I thought was so interesting about the next series is that they started to allow, all right? They started to allow Jake Browning to throw the ball. Not a lot on the next series, but they started, all right? And then on the third series, okay, you know, you basically, you basically, at that point, you throw in downfield to Jamar for whatever, 15 or 18 yards. You're throwing downfield to Trent Irwin. You're throwing downfield to Huggin, to Hudson, rather. Throwing yep. downfield to Higgins. And all of a sudden, you say, my God, this guy can do it. And it really, you know what it reminded me of? Honestly, this is a weird thing to say. But when Joe Burrow was at LSU and had that incredible game against uh, Alabama, you know, that basically put him on the national stage right there. Has this incredible game. And you know what happened? I remember asking Joe Brady, his his coach yep. at that time at LSU. I said, you didn't think it was important in a game like this for all the marbles, biggest game of Joe Burrow's life, to get him some confidence by throwing the ball around a little bit, making some sure completions. You started the game, bang, 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 going downfield. And he goes... Joe Burrow does not need confidence at the start of any game. You know, as much as any player I've ever been around, he's his own confident person. And so I just thought of that. If, if, if Zach Taylor and Brian Callahan are allowing him to do this, they have to, have to trust him to be able to do it. And so then you see, the last two possessions of the first half, you know, they go that first one, 92 yards. Um, and then the next one, 75 yards, if I'm right. remembering right. But those last two possessions of the first half, they basically announced this is not a dink and dunk offense. This is the real Cincinnati offense. And hats off to Zach Taylor. Hats off to Kelly and hats off to the uh, pitcher to – all the guys on that coaching staff who said, hey, listen, we're not going to dink and dunk. We are going to play Bengals football. And I, I, I hand it to them. They did a great job. I can't agree with you more, Peter. I mean, I think that's a great point about the coaches because, you know, it's like oh, everybody feels like we're cannon fodder. We're yeah. a 10-plus point underdog in this football game. It's national television. Uh, Jake Browning gets to show <laughs> what he's about. And we get to show what we're about as coaches, you know, trying to help Jake Browning do his thing. And I thought the coaches all, you know, shined real brightly in that uh, national spotlight, like you're talking about, because the game plan was outstanding. I mean, they they did everything. They ran the football well. They play yeah. action off of the off of the run game. They ran the screen game. They got Browning out of pocket, changed in the launch point with bootlegs and nakeds. And I mean, he throws really well. He's accurate on the run. They had a game plan that was chock full, man, and they used every bit of it, and uh, and it was it was executed to perfection. And 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 they never, like you said, I, they never felt like they were out of control of that football game. Even that stretch, two minutes and twenty seconds, where they, you know, gave up a touchdown, then they had the botched, you know, uh, gadget play. Tyler Boyd throws the interception, and they score again. They score fourteen points in literally two minutes and twenty seconds. And they they don't bat an eye, you know. They they overcome the adversity, and this football game had five ties. I think the most in any game in the NFL this season, and it was just, it was just a, a heck of a you battle. Know, Dave, I got it. I've got to ask you this question, yeah, because I'm watching it and I'm saying, man, Tyler Boyd's a good athlete. What in the world was that thing? So tell me about that play. Is that a play that? You think they had practiced a lot? Were they very confident in it? What do you What do you know about that play? Not much, and I hope I never see it again. I guess. I mean, I I, I hadn't seen it much, and uh, I I they obviously 
the time it was ill timed. It was I think Jake might have slipped or fallen or something. Yeah. And the whole the whole thing got mistimed and, and in retrospect, Tyler Boyd, throw it away or run it. Yeah, exactly. You know? That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. It, it, you know, I mean, look, Tyler Boyd is thinking to himself, I'm sure, okay, here's my chance. I can really show what a great thrower I am and, and all right. that stuff. But there are some times, and I'm sure, I bet you $1,000 that Zach Taylor has gone up to him or will go up to him today at some point and just say, hey, listen, you know, you got to eat that ball if right. if the play isn't there. Right. You know, just throw it away. Even if it's intentional grounding, at least it's not a touchdown. Right. You know? Right. Anyway. And, and Tyler Boyd was a high school quarterback. So, that, you know, now yeah. it, 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 he wasn't running the run and shoot. You know, the he was a running quarterback, but he could he threw the football and he can throw. But, oh, man, the whole that that whole sequence was like, oh, I can't believe it. But I tell you, the the, the amazing thing. Jake Browning is one of seven quarterbacks in the history of the National Football League to <coughs> 86 or more per, uh, 86% or better and throw for 350 yards. One of seven guys. It's, it's unbelievable to do it in his second NFL start yeah. is literally mind-boggling. On national television, in front of the yeah. whole world, like Zach said, he lit the world up, made some money for himself, I think, man. Hey, <laughs> no Dave, doubt. so tell me something. Yeah, I've never met Jake Browning. I have no idea anything about him. What kind of guy is he? Tell me about him. Tell me about him. Very interesting, Peter. You know, you like to have your backup quarterback have a lot of the same traits in terms of playing the game of football as your as your starter. They have the same approach, the same mindset. They're like so even keeled. They don't get high with the highs, low with the lows. They're just steady Eddie, man. And that's how Jake is. Jake's like, you know, I haven't plateaued. I don't feel like I've plateaued after the game he's talking about, you know, and, and he had, he didn't get too down after the Pittsburgh game. It was a tough game in bad weather. Uh, and, you know, he know, I know I can do better. I mean, it, these guys are very, very similar in their approach to the game of football. I think in life in general, because Jake Brown has had to overcome adversity after adversity to just to continue to play in the national football league. <coughs> So there's a lot of similarities there, and they 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 both have very high football IQ. They like the way Jake can throw the football on the on the move, like like Joe can. There's a lot of similar skill sets and a lot of you know similar uh, mentality and approach to the game. That's why they feel like they they had a, a backup quarterback that they didn't have to change anything offensively. It was just like, all right, what do you like best? What what do you what should we stay away from? And and Jake's answer was. Just call plays you think you need to call to win the game. I'm good with all of it. Just, you know, just yeah. let, let it roll. You know, that confidence in yourself is key. Yeah. I'll tell you what I find interesting because I ended up going online and looking at his college career. Yeah. I say this about Brock Purdy all the time, that, you know, the reason why Brock Purdy hit the ground running in the NFL, I think, is because he had 46 starts in a power five conference. Yep. I mean, that is a big, big deal. And if you look at Jake Browning, okay, you look at a guy who I don't know how many starts he had, probably had almost the same 45, over, whatever. Over I, I don't know. Yeah, over wow. 50. Yeah. yeah. Over so 50. he won 39 so, games. He set a record. He won 39 games at Washington and set a conference record. Wow. Well, and, you know, guys like that, you might look at them and you might say, uh, the guy's not a great NFL prospect. The guy, you know, here's what it is I find with Brock Purdy. And I'll tell you a quick story. I covered the first game that he played in a year ago this week, uh, or the first game we played a lot in. It was the game against Miami uh, where Jimmy Garoppolo got hurt. And he was going to be out for the year, most likely. And now here comes Brock Purdy, right. last pick in the draft. Everybody said the 49ers season is over. And so I watched him and nothing phased him. Absolutely nothing. Shanahan called the exact game he was going to call for Garoppolo. Uh, made some big throws in the game. They killed the Dolphins that day. And <clears throat> I remember after the game, George Kittle had a great line. He goes, 
you know, it's not only that Brock played a lot of football in college, but it's that he lost a lot. I said, what do you mean? And he goes, you have to understand that when you're losing games, you know, against great competition, you know, all that does is make you say, well, here's what I have to do to work harder or to be better. I got to work hard. I've got to go do this and all that. And so it just strikes me with the way you describe uh, Jake Browning is that one of the worst things you can do, honestly, is have rabbit ears, is pay any attention whatsoever. Like after that game, I'll never forget. I said to Brock Purdy, hey, Brock, I said, next week in your first NFL start in this stadium, the guy on the other side of the field is going to be Tom Brady. I said, how do you feel about that? He goes, cool. He's been playing football longer than I've been alive. (laughs) And I just said to myself, okay, this guy can handle this. You know, I think, I think he can handle it. And he just sort of shrugged it off. And I'm sure Jake Browning is the same way. The only thing that can help him right now is having full attention on Joe Burrow, you know, his quarterback coach, his coordinator, his head coach, just be fed by them and just ignore idiots like me who say the Bengals season is over, you know, and it, because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All the stuff that is said on the outside simply doesn't matter. You're right. You're right. It's, it's, uh, for, don't listen to the outside noise, tighten the focus, you know, all that good stuff. The interesting thing in this matchup coming up, the, the Bengals and the Colts, Gardner Minshew and uh, Jake Browning, when they were in college in, in 2018, Jake Browning went to Washington. Gardner Minshew went to Washington State. <clears throat> they played the Apple Cup, <clears throat> the oh, big yeah. rivalry game. And uh, 16th ranked Washington upset 7th ranked Washington State. Jake Browning uh, upset Minshew that day and was <coughs> A big win, and you're right though. Jake Browning, bunch of college experience. He went to high school in California. He set national passing records in high school. Ridiculous numbers, like twelve thousand yards plus or whatever. It was it was crazy. So he's won at a high level in high school, at a high level in college. Now he's got his first NFL victory. Who knows? Who knows what it might uh, it might lead to? It's a crazy deal. The one other thing I would say about what this says to me about the Bengals. You know, did you notice how after the game, how feisty Jamar Chase was? Yeah. He was, he was almost angry, yeah. you know, after the game. I said, what is this guy so pissed off about? <laughs> and I think if you were a competitor and you're a really good player, you know, Dave, I bet you can probably recall back in the days of Boomer and Kenny Anderson, you know, Ken Anderson was was genuine and lovely, great guy. But I bet you a thousand bucks in 1984 when Boomer started playing, he was ticked off. You know, because he's a competitor. Yeah. You know, Jack Lambert once said the quarterback I admired the most who I played, Ken Anderson. Now, for Jack Lambert to say that. You got to be one tough hombre right there. Yep. And and so and so guys like, you know, even if you know Kenny Anderson has to take a seat behind Boomer, that's not going to extinguish what's inside of him at all. Right. And I am positive that that stuff from Jamar Chase the other night was basically Jamar Chase saying to the world, "Don't go trashing us because Burrow's not playing." That we're, that's that's one guy on our team. We're we're going to be heard from here, and you know, look, all the way from Mike Brown down. I am sure that even though they may not love some of the ways that guys like Jamar Chase, uh, you know, express themselves sometimes, they have to love the fact that this seed has been planted in this person and in this team that. 
we will be heard from this year. We will make the playoffs and we are going to win in the playoffs this year. We don't care that Joe Burrow is not here. And that to me is what I heard out of Jamar Chase the other day. And look, we don't know, Dave. We have no idea. We didn't even know. Look, it's an uphill fight. There's yeah. all these teams, Buffalo and, you know, in Houston, all these teams that are close right, right now, you know, so you don't really know what's going to happen or what it's going to lead to. But I just like what it says about the character of my players and the character of my team. I agree with you, Peter. It's like, you know, you're not going to make Jake Browning Joe Burrow, but you can make <clears throat> Jake Browning the best version of Jake Browning you possibly yeah. can be. Everybody else around him, you know, players and coaches and, and everybody. I know we're up against it, Peter. I know you're super generous with your time as always, and but I got to uh, – I get a bit of goodbye here and, and, and finish this one regretfully because I could talk to you all day about football. <laughs> You're the best. Yeah, we always have fun, Dave. No question. Thanks yeah. for everything. And I uh, look forward to uh, catching up again down the road, sir. Sounds great, Dave. All the best to you. Take care. Appreciate you, Peter. Dave Lapham here. And every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.